What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Senator Rick Scott. He's going to be talking about Social Security. And anytime I hear anything that comes out about Social Security or retirement, I want to bring that to you guys because I think it's very, very important information. And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to break this video up into two separate videos. So you'll at least have two videos today. So make sure you tune in for those. And I might also put in another video because I want to show you a clip of uh, President, former President Obama. He was talking about Social Security as well. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all that way you'll get notified anytime I put out a video. And like I said, I might have three different videos, at least two, but maybe three different videos to put out today. So make sure you click all when you hit that little bell notification, and you'll get all three of those notifications. If you are not getting the notifications, Please let me know in the comment section below, and I will relay this message to YouTube. Okay, so let's go ahead and play. This is Senator Scott. He's going to be talking about Social Security. Now, like I said, he talks about Social Security, and then he answers some questions about Social Security. So the first portion, I have to chime in and talk about this because he's been saying this for the last six, seven months and I just think he's just out and out lying to the American people. And so I want to bring this to your attention. And then if we have enough time in this video, we'll play it. But if we don't, then we'll play it in another video. Uh, what else he says about Social Security, because that might be actually surprising. So let's let's go and play the clip. Here we go. Pratt say that one of your proposals that which would sunset all federal legislation after five years jeopardizes Medicare and Social Security. You've previously said that those programs need to be preserved, reformed, and protected. So just a simple yes or no. Do Republicans want to cut Medicare and or Social Security? Absolutely not. And you know the Democrats just cut $280 billion. All Democrats in the Senate and House voted to cut $280 billion out of Medicare just two, what, two months ago. And then they want to say Republicans want to cut something. Democrats have done this. Senator. Joe Biden, when he was senator, said he wanted to cut Medicare and Social Security. I believe we got to preserve them and, and make sure we, 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 we keep them. What I want to do is make sure we live within our means and make sure we preserve those programs. People have paid into them. They believe in them. I believe in them. I'm going to fight like hell to make sure we preserve Medicare and Social Security. Just want to correct the record. The Democrats' plan, which is now law, it didn't cut Social excuse me, didn't cut Medicare benefits. It allowed for negotiation for prescription drug prices, which would ultimately bring down the price and the cost for, for Medicare consumers. But I want to ask the next question, which is about raising okay, the eligibility. Okay, can we just finish that, though? Sure. It's, it cut 280, Dana, it cut $280 billion out of Medicare. That means we're going to have fewer life-saving drugs. It cut $280 billion out of, out of Medicare. They can it say they, would, they did all that. Cut, they it cut didn't $280 cut, billion dollars out of Medicare. It did not cut benefits. It will reduce life-saving drugs. It didn't. <laughs> you can do that. But you know, to make here, something's going to happen. Okay. All right. But Dana, I, I, come on. All right. I, I mean, I, I want to. We can debate that and, and for, for a long time. But I want to focus on you and the Republicans and what you want to do right now. Do you? Okay. So I want to go back first. Let's just go back to the very, very beginning, because she asked him if you if you paid attention. She asked him a yes or no question, and he answers the question and then attacks. The Democrats. And this is, we see this, the Democrats do this, Republicans do this, but how are we as a country going to unite if we just have politicians fighting against each other? And so, and, and just before this, they were talking about uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi, her husband was attacked and all this, and he was saying how horrible it is and how we need to unite as a country and come together and not fight against each other. And then he says, and the, the first thing, the, the next question that she asked him, he doesn't answer the yes or no, or he answers, I shouldn't say that. He answers yes, but then he attacks. And this is just, this is common. This is how politicians uh, work. And it's, it's, it's really sad because the American people look at this like, well, who do we believe? Okay, he's saying yes, and then he's saying Democrats are bad, and then Democrats are saying yes, and they're saying uh, Republicans are bad. Who do we believe? So let me let me just play that first part, and then we're going to talk about this two hundred and eighty billion dollars. So let's play the first part. So yes or no question. Your midterm agenda. Democrats say that one of your proposals that which would sunset all federal legislation after five years jeopardizes Medicare and Social Security. You've previously said that those programs need to be preserved, reformed, and protected. So just a simple yes or no. Do Republicans want to cut? Medicare and or Social Security? 
Absolutely not. And you know, the Democrats just cut $280 billion. All okay. And I was wrong. Not yet. She, he said, no, no, they don't want uh, to cut Medicare, Social Security. So you can believe him if you want to believe him or not. But you saw exactly how he did that. Yes or no? He says no. And then he goes to attack, right? And talk about how the Democrats want to do this. Okay. So now let's talk about that because this is something that's just a flat out lie. And I'm going to explain it to you. And it, it's sad that he is still saying this. And a lot of times that he mentions this, he gets pushback from the reporters because they already know. They know that he's not being honest and they try to push back and then he just continues and they go back and forth, back and forth. So basically what he is saying, and, and, and let's start from the beginning. So he's talking about the last legislation where they, are, they can negotiate drug prices. Now, this has not happened yet. This is going to happen a couple years from now. Okay, So this is not anything that's been implemented yet, but it will save the federal government $280 billion in the long run. Okay, So what he is saying he is saying because of this negotiation that can happen between the, the Medicare and, and these pharmaceutical companies, that would mean there's going to be a loss of $280 billion from the pharmaceutical companies. Because that's what it comes down to. Because the federal government, Medicare, will be able to save $280 billion. And because they're able to save $280 billion, he's calling that a cut. And so let me just give you an example here. Let's let's just say uh, all of all of uh, Medicare is five hundred billion dollars. So it costs five hundred billion dollars to to run. Now I don't know those numbers. I'm just putting number out there. And let's say they're able to save two hundred billion dollars. They're able to save two hundred billion dollars because they're able to negotiate those prices with the pharmaceutical companies. What he is saying is because the Medicare doesn't need the 500 billion anymore because now they have 280 billion of savings that that's a cut. But realistically what it is is it means that that 280 billion can go towards other things in Medicare. Okay, the money's not going away, it's money that's being saved. And we should want our government to save money and not just give the money out to the pharmaceutical companies because because if the money doesn't if the money is not saved it's going to the pharmaceutical companies that's where it's going now that 280 billion guess what it's going to the pharmaceutical companies and then his other argument is well if the pharmaceutical companies don't have this 280 billion then they're not going to do the research uh, because it's just not going to be worth it to them and so that means that we're in a situation where we're not going to get as many prescription medications as as we have now in my personal opinion when it comes to prescription medication we have too much already when you're seeing advertisements on tv which is very uncommon okay advertising on tv about pharmaceutical drugs it's new zealand and the u.s the only countries in in the, in the world that do that and when i was in colombia for five months all this year i didn't see one commercial for pharmaceutical come and, and it's weird it's actually weird when you think about it when you're looking at a commercial that is trying to uh, convince you to go to your doctor and say, hey, I, I want to try this or I want to try that. I saw a commercial on, on TV, pharmaceutical medication. And so that's what, I mean, that's how big of a business it is in the U.S. And so when it comes down to it, he's saying that by saving money, that's cutting Medicare. It's not cutting benefits at all. It's actually putting us in a situation where Medicare can go down in cost. We can see premiums go down in cost because they're saving money. They're not spending as much. And so that's what we should want. But we're getting from, from this politician, and he, and he he continues to say this, we're getting the reverse. He's saying, no, spend more. Spend more money. Give these pharmaceutical companies more money. And then who has to pay for it? The American people have to pay for it because your premiums go up. And in 2023, luckily it will go down, but that's because in 2022, it went up to $21. It went up high because of the pharmaceutical drugs. So, I mean, we, we really need to, to listen to politicians, what they're saying, and he's continuing to say this. And it, it, it's, it's one of those things that really, really bothers me because I know he's not being honest. He knows he's not being honest. He's being called on it, and he continues to say it. Over and over again, 280 billion. They're cutting 280 billion. When the reality is, and if you look at the platforms, okay, and I, I like to go to this because 
uh, politicians are going to pretty much say anything to get elected, right? But they have a platform. You can go to the Republican National, the, 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 the National Party and find out what that platform is. They want less government spending. That is a part of their platform. Guess what? This is less government spending if you can negotiate drug prices with these pharmaceutical companies. If Medicare can save $280 billion, that's less government spending. But he is continuing to say, no, it's a cut. It's a cut to Medicare. And if people look at that and they don't do the research and they're, gonna, they're just going to think, yeah, you know what? Democrats want to cut Medicare, so I'm going to go ahead and, and vote for whoever Senator Scott says to vote for. And that is a real, real danger. Okay, And I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Just know what the platforms are. And just know when politicians are telling you something that is just not true. So I just wanted to put that video out. I want you guys to let me know how you feel about it. So let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.